Hey, Ben here with Studio on the Lake once again. Here's a project that I was starting to edit this morning, and then uh, Jordy went ahead and posted a wizard video, and I got sidetracked. You probably saw that one already if you're a subscriber to the channel. If you're not, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you would. It'll help us out and uh, take a look at Jordy's stuff and uh, everybody else that's down in this thing below. So here's a, here's a whale. It's just a simple, uh, whimsical, silly thing. A grinning whale. Not any particular species of whale. When I was painting him, I was looking at to see maybe if he could be an orca. But the, the white patches on an orca didn't really work for him so you see you see here a standard uh, basswood I cut two of them out there actually two of them being worked on uh, eventually in a couple more minutes here you, I'm gonna drop the one out of the video and uh, you'll just see the, the finish on the on the second one so there's a the standard DeWalt uh, really what I'm doing right here is is taking that thing from square block form down to round and basically where it's going to end up. You can do this with a knife, of course. You can do this with a with a grinder, um, with your hand pieces. Anything works. Chisels. It's just quicker in my case to get down to there. Once you get the basic shape out, then you can start uh, doing the good stuff. So I felt like. Uh, this guy needed a little knife work to see where he was coming. So there's a standard. It's called a bench knife. If you're if you're looking for a carving knife, uh, don't look up wood carving knife. Uh, although that will get you there. Look for a bench knife. You'll find the blade is is typically thinner on that, and it's a it's uh, you got a nice taper to it. If you try to whittle with a, a bigger knife, uh, so there, there are Swedish Sloyd knives out there, although the, the, you'll find that's a pretty uh, stout knife uh, and, and not as good for doing the detail. This is part of what Jordy started this morning, a little excerpt in here. Uh, hey, I, I've got some carvings up on an Etsy page, and you can find that. Just go to Etsy, and then type in, and it's in the description below, Ben Studio on the Lake. One word, Ben Studio on the work, uh, Lake, if, you, if you're interested in, in maybe purchasing uh, one of the carvings. So back to the whale. I've switched to the power carver. It has one of the gold cuts all bits on it. You can find those down in the link below in the description. And now I'm just making this guy round. And you'll notice what I did there. Uh, put a B on it, meaning that's the bottom. So I hadn't really determined which side he was gonna go because his tail could have went either way. And as I'm making this guy semi-round, which you'll find is, is one of the harder things to do in carving, is making a square around. Uh, I needed a reference on the bottom of that. So everything will taper down to the bottom of the whale. And you'll notice I'm kind of leaving the bottom of this uh, character flat on there. So now we're on to the tail. You're not going to get a whole lot of uh, slow motion in this. There'll be a few sections in there. If, if you'd like to see a video, uh, a painfully long one, about an hour, let me know. I'll, I'll go ahead and, and, and quit fast forward in this. But by and large, you get an idea of what's what's going on with this guy. With, without painfully watching each different section. So his tail, I, I got down about as thin as I, I wanted it. He's looking like I wanted him to look, like I saw him in my head. And now it's time to put a couple of eyes on him. And I, was, I wanted to make this guy grinning, kind of silly, with the big teeth. So the eyes kind of have to be symmetrical just in case they, you can catch a view of him and, and see both eyes at one time. If one's out of whack, it'll, it'll really, really look weird. So 
you'll see I, I've drawn a couple of arcs around the, the ball there and then I went ahead and put in the eye. He's not going to get a glass eye, this is going to be a, a carved eye. And you see where the intersection of those arcs are. I looked at it again to make sure that, that he was where he should be. There's a blowhole, going to go in the top. And here's a reference line to start working on the mouth. I wasn't sure exactly where I wanted the mouth to begin and end. And you'll see as this goes through, I adjust it just a little bit. Uh, decided it needed to go kind of up into the eye. So once we get that done, I threw a taper taper bit in there. That's a 3 32nd because you can tell because of the black hand piece, I run a different collet in the blue one. The blue one has a uh, eighth inch collet in it. Most of these sets, and other people have mentioned them, do make a, if you only have one, they do make a adapter piece that slides into the eighth inch collet. So uh, you're, you're not having to take a key and a chuck out and, and change that collet each time. You can slide that in there and use a 3 32nd uh, shaft on, on there. So we're rounding out a couple of eyes. And then it's time to cut the mouth in. This is the part where if you're you're not confident in what you what you designed or you, you screw the whole thing up. And then it helps if you have a, a stove, wood burning stove, in the corner over there. And you can just take it over there and throw it in the fireplace and discard all the video if you're filming it. If you're not filming it, no one knows but you. You wasted all morning and then uh, it didn't come out right. And that does happen, by the way. I, I personally wouldn't, re I wouldn't recommend that you throw something you don't like out right away. I, I've stopped working on several pieces over the years and, and set them off to the side, only uh, at a future date, um, either a, a couple weeks, a month, a couple years in some cases. And, and coming across the piece again when cleaning up or doing something, moving stuff, think that, uh, well, that, that guy can be saved. I like him again. And you'll pull it out and, and come up with a pretty nice carving. So don't throw everything away, but there are some things that obviously uh, you, you'll have screwed up and you might as well throw those away. So we're throwing, throwing some lips on these guys. And these lips will be tapered down back into the body. I've switched to a, a ruby bit. I, I think all my rubies are uh, 3 seconds. Yep, they are. They, they can tell by the black, the older handpiece uh, from JPL Enterprises. And uh, probably one of my favorite uh, bits of all, you know, uh, of everything. And this is, uh, this is, uh, Oh heck, I want to say a taper, but that's not right. Flame, there we go, it came to me. And a senior moment there, so that's a flame bit. And you can see that I'm feathering that back into the body that I made round initially. If you're curious of the speeds, uh, it's either real time in this video here or three times uh, the speed. All told, this guy took probably three hours to do, and I don't count the stuff on the paint. The paint was another hour or two. You'll, you'll find out that he's he was painted with acrylic paint, and then a couple of coats of gloss over top of him because he's supposed to be wet in the ocean. That kind of that sort of thing. I I do put him on a stand. Also, I take a piece of brass rod. Uh, I. Not sure what size brass rod that is, probably quarter inch and uh, about three inches long. And I put him up on a piece of uh, a, a wooden base. And the, the wooden base is uh, elm, elm wood. 
It's from a Dutch elm tree that I have a ton of, probably two or three thousand board foot of it still left, and it it stains or does it it cleans up beautifully when you sand it down. You'll you'll see the wood grain in it later when I. It does have it has no stain on it whatsoever. Very similar wood that Dutch elm is to um, walnut. The only issue with it is it's cross-link grain and it's unstable as heck. Uh, if you take a six by six inch piece, sand it completely flat, leave it laying in the, on the shop bench and come back even two or three days later, you'll find that it's, it's warped. And it does that with or without a finish. So it's, it's really not good furniture wood, not necessarily even good carving wood, but it's sure, sure pretty stuff but it's unstable. Now if you're looking for a piece that's really strong, that cross-linked cross -linked and interlinked grain that's in that thing, uh, the very thing that makes it, it act stupid and, and warp uh, also makes it extremely strong. So it's, it's a good one for uh, uh, knife handles and that sort of thing. So there's the eyeballs. You'll notice that I teardrop those a little bit there towards the end instead of just uh, oval-shaped round. And then here is the uh, the blowhole. This guy is a character, and now you can really see that he's a character. <coughs> I use the wood burner, uh, the, the PJL Enterprises, the Ultima Carver uh, combo that I use has a burning station on one side with the pens, and then on the other side it has the uh, motor for the handpiece and the controls for that. And uh, as a consequence, I have two of them. So this red one is heavy duty. It, you won't probably see the green one in here. It's a finer tip. Uh, and I, I'm running this fairly hot. And I'm using it as a stop cut. So a stop cut with a knife, if you were doing that, you would make a line across the grain. And that would be where your knife tends to drop into that cut and uh, doesn't continue running on down. So in, in this case, the rotary, I can carve pretty much any direction with those. But the nice thing about doing this is uh, when I run that uh, flame bit or a taper, the tip of that wants to follow to some degree uh, this burn mark, which is fairly deep. And uh, it outlines the piece that I, I want to bring up. So. It kind of acts like a, a stop cut for a rotary power car, and you can see how that's I'm doing that now. And uh, I, I didn't go all the way down with those. I did the top portion of the teeth, and then turned around and did the bottom portion of the teeth. These all get rounded over. And you can see when looking at the, the rest of that, I, I've got a lot of sanding and uh, cleanup work to contour everything around. So uh, where I've cut, you can see the upper lip and around the eyes and bottom is still not contoured in. But uh, there's pretty much the basic shape of this guy. And like I said, where my thumb was there, he's going to get a uh, um, brass rod and then stuck on a piece of that elm wood and then painted with the Josonia acrylic paints with several coats in different layers and then uh, when he's all done when that stuff's all dry then I'll, I'll shoot it with an acrylic gloss lacquer and you'll see him in the end so here uh, Rob from Just Carve Rob if you go over and check him out uh, Rob your basswood I managed to get it shipped off today I sent you an email on that and they, they said Monday but uh, I'm not sure that that'll work but I'm sure you'll get that stuff next week and uh, hey have a lot of fun with it when you get it um, it, this stuff is good. It's going to be painted over, so I'm not really worried about it. I'm just putting a couple of contour lines in. The, I'm using the flat of the heavy duty burner, and this stuff will read through the paint. It'll show uh, in the shiny part, it'll kind of give you a, a little relief area in there. And it won't look so static. The idea with carving is uh, to, the pose. You warp stuff around a little bit. If you put something straight on, it looks like a person. If you tell a person to take a photograph and you stand them straight up, their arms down at their side looking straight at you, 
it's not a good pose. Uh, now, if you, some of these model poses are not good poses either, especially in the selfie air today. Uh, that's just as fake as, as standing them straight up, but that's what differentiates a carving and makes one look interesting is your pose and, and, and change the stuff around. Uh, Jordy over at Carve Fusion says it, and uh, I will too. Sign your work. Uh, someday, one of your relatives, or God forbid, somebody who bought something from you, you might become famous for whatever reason. Uh, holy smokes knows, knows why one thing catches on and another. You'll probably be dead by then, but uh, someone might like this as folk art in the future and uh, make enough money to pay off their house. So sign it by all means, especially if you don't have a specific style. I carve in a lot of different styles, and you'd be hard for us to say, well, this is one from Ben uh, in his studio on the lake period. But by all means, do, do sign your work. It's not vain there, to, in my opinion. Uh, all of this is my opinion, of course. To sign stuff, uh, it just makes sense. Now, there are artists that refuse to sign things, and they say that if, if uh, a lot of the rationale is is if some they don't want somebody purchasing it because of their name and and i get that to some degree they want them to buy it because of what it says and not necessarily collecting there is a point if if you get to the point in your art where you're, you're getting able to sell it for big money and you can't make enough because this stuff is handmade and you just keep running your prices up well then people's start collecting it and uh, run the prices up even further i mean that's a good thing for an artist for sure and I, I don't know the correct answer i like money personally so i'm going to go with the money part if someone's willing to pay big money for it then i, I certainly am more than happy to ship it your way so here's uh you've seen me do this in a couple of other videos uh this is a piece of 10 and i'm putting 10 fins on there and the, one of the main reasons is these uh, things will break off if there would uh, the other reason is that they're they're simple and i think they look really good um, so this guy just gets two two fins and i i did a little body work on them you see the pliers in the background now this is the water spout coming out of his head up there in the water hole And you saw me dip him in shellac there, I forgot that. And then there's that base that I was talking about that I wasn't gonna show you. I just drilled a hole in the base, a drill in the hole in the bottom, I'm stuck it on there. That doesn't take a whole lot of talent to pull that off. Uh, I did kind of cant him off to the side, talking about that pose stuff. And here I'm just defining down these pieces. And I'll take the couple of pliers and warp this stuff all around, sculpt it to where it's looks kind of like a uh, water spout sticking out of the top of his head there. So there he is uh, without the acrylic paint on there. He's all stuck together and glued up and ready to go. So. As usual, I'm not going to show you the painting on it. It's too painful for you to watch and too painful for me to film. So there he is, a couple of coats of black, a couple of coats of gloss. They got the white in there. He got a big old shit-eating grin. And uh, one thing you'll notice, uh, the way I painted that eye, that one eye, he's looking down to the left with the pupil uh, floating in the corner. And then this eye, he's facing to the forward. Uh, you can't put this guy straight ahead and read it so the, both those eyes work so as always thanks a lot like comment uh, and subscribe and check out the etsy store thanks a lot this has been